everybody, and welcome back. My name is not Sue, and I'm from OML Embroidery. Over there at the computer is Dawn. Hello. So, yay, hello. So this is Tula Sullivan, <laughs> which I thought was pretty clever. And this is the zipper bag that I made. It's from Anita Good Design All Access this month, May, and I just had to. So I picked my, one of my favorites, I mean, they're all my favorites, right? Uh, Tula Pink Fabric, which is turquoise, and I chose purple as the accent color, so it kind of looks like uh, James Sullivan from Monsters, Inc. So yeah. this is, this is the distant cousin. So how cute is this? I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, my favorite thing about this are the eyes. Her her eyes are like, uh, yeah, she doesn't care. <laughs> but it's a nice size. I like the size. My hand on it, you can see. Um, I think I'm going to put scissors and stuff like that in it. I think it's perfect. I'd be good for that. Yeah, to hang around like a sewing pack sort of thing. I think it'll be awesome. So that's... Um, Tula Sullivan. There you go. Cute name, too. Before we get started on today, I wanted to show you guys what I finished. So this is the design from Dime, the bloom. And then we did a sewing verse on how to sew everything together. And it's bright and beautiful with mylar and bright colors. And I use scraps for of a jelly roll for to put everything together i just put black it's kind of like felt on the back and i did bind it and i didn't do a bad job of binding so i'm kind of happy about that it's coming together it's getting there so um awesome 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 so that is what i have been doing and today we're going to be doing the cow bag, the cow bag, moo to everyone. Absolutely adorable. So the first step is you put on some tearaway fabric, tearaway stabilizer in your bigger hoop. These are bigger designs and you're going to stitch out these uh, little extra parts. And if you can see on Tula Sullivan here, they're really cute and you get placement line it just makes it really nice so cow has ears and feet and arms and horns at the top now I have changed it up a little bit because I have this super cute cow fabric I have like two bolts of it so I need to use it so um, I am skipping, I am skipping all of the applique because I've got this going on already. So that makes it even faster. But look at this fabric. Isn't that adorable? Awesome. I just thought, I thought, oh yeah, I did all of these pieces in one hooping. So it's basically, if you like to think of mug rugs, it's basically done the same way. Placement stitch. You put your fabric down and trim it and then the detail work and then you put the back on and then you do the satin stitches around the side. So that's how that's done. It's pretty easy to do. The only thing to remember is it's easier if you leave um, a tab for yourself to... Um, when you're attaching it and I'll show you why now on this one the front I trimmed it <laughs> oops but I remembered on the back so I left it on the back so if you can only do one that's fine it just really helps you can put your tape there I'll be showing you guys all of this I went ahead and did this extra stuff just to kind of speed it up because the difficult parts are on the front so um, yeah there we go so all of these were in one piece it did not take long you could see there's a little applique 
the bottom feet were um there's a bottom foot you can see there's a line there i just left it because i don't care but the bottom foot was folded fabric for the black part which is the bottom part i didn't do it because i kind of fussy cut a little bit my cow fabric which yeah that was a lot of fun um so there we go on the back it's pink and just a little bit of applique so we're gonna put them aside the next hooping and it is really worth three hoopings the next hooping is the back of the bag and there are black appliques but again i didn't do them because i want the fabric to speak for itself and it does and i love it i think it's kind of awesome so i save myself some time if you don't have awesome cow fabric then use whatever color you want you can make your cow into whatever you want um and then add the appliques they're meant to match up so for this one i used a little bit of thin batting on both sides and for this one I used you can't see it I guess maybe on this one you can yeah I just use a little bit of fusible fleece now why did I use that it's thick enough to give it a little extra but thin enough it's not going to be as bulky in the seams I just find it a little bit easier and it irons on and it's you know done there you go so I've got my pieces ready and because this is oh i don't have a cow don't lose my cow parts um i ironed it down you know where we're going to place it against the zipper and it's perfect so i've got my two pieces i did my back one it didn't take long to do at all um now i was having a problem with my machine but i want to show you guys the results of uh, pull compensation and when you don't have enough stabilizer or when you don't hoop it properly now we were constantly pulling on it so it's slightly exaggerated but look how it puckers the fabric so the same design this is the back the same design with proper hooping and a little bit more there's a little bit of puckering, but there really isn't a whole lot. So if you get puckering like this, it's because the satin stitches, so we'll take one of the small ones, for example, the satin stitches are pulling. It does this kind of movement when it's stitching and it pulls the fabric. So what you ideally want is enough uh, stabilizer and hooping this is why we hoop to hold everything better so if you start seeing this it's not going to get any better there's more of it here you see i didn't even do the appliques because i was having a problem uh it's fixed though so don't worry about it but it's a perfect example of pull compensation and uh it makes everything move so you really want to have the right stabilizer you really want to have it hooped properly and you really want to be careful when you're taping and doing stuff that you don't move anything like when you're turning your hoop upside down i'm always saying be really careful you can't push on it because you're going to move the stabilizer and you're going to get this kind of thing so i just kept it because i thought it was a great example so I have everything ready now we got to do a little bit of stitching and then we're gonna put the body parts together and we're gonna put the back on it and uh, everything's gonna be together so this it's all coming together so um, let's see are there any questions good morning good morning good morning <laughs> NC Lawson Leah hello Patty um, Patty's from hi from she's not from anywhere but then she's from florida so <laughs> hi patty from florida judy quilt woo love that monster bag yeah isn't it cute isn't it cute it's the one that caught my attention so i had to make it and it's actually a good thing i did because we had monster problems 
that I had to sort out and now we've started it. So it's kind of awesome. So yeah, there we go. I like it. The eyes just make it. This is how I feel today. Nah, I'm always happy. Come on. <laughs> Love your pom-pom trim in the back. Oh, I guess you can see the whole, my whole desk. It's back there that she's talking about. Yeah, we move stuff around and I keep moving my desk. So that was me moving it. I did. I did. Um, would it help to fuse SF 101 to the back of the fabric? I'm not sure what that is, Anne. Um, but Dawn just gets this from Lens Mills and yeah. it's fusible on both sides. And I just find it's just, it's nice. It's not, it's not batting by any means, but it's something and I like it. I'm pretty sure it's Pellin. Pellin? I think so. Pellin fusible fleece and it's actually fusible on both sides so that um that is how I was able to do that so Judy Quilt says I like the gnome lace on your desk yeah you can see we've got uh, Gerald and Geraldine watching us isn't that cute you can see everything on my desk and yeah my desk always looks like this this is just my uh work desk i i guess you'd call it where i cut things and do things and it moves around and it folds out it's a perfect little desk um i do the ironing here too so awesome awesome so if you have any questions feel free to ask them one of the mods or dawn and sometimes me um it, we'll answer them just you know pose it as a question we try to pay attention and um you know everything helps where's your candy dish i know right oh. i thought of that this morning we got to get candies going on um i promise for the next video where you see my desk there will be some cool candies on it for sure so yeah we're gonna get that back uh, Sarah says fab nails. Yeah, I haven't changed them from earlier. They last, they should last like two weeks. So uh, there we go. Well, they kind of match Tula Sullivan. Tula Sullivan. I know, right? <laughs> I know. It's like this is the cow hand because it's the pink. And this matches Tula Sullivan. Yep. For sure. Tula Sullivan. I giggle at myself oh, when I... said magic word, Cindy King candy yeah we're gonna get that going um fun it's fun this isn't my work area because i have like two desks and hutches and all sorts of things but if you guys want to see my layout where i digitize uh where i do everything let me know and i can throw a picture in the group what don's laughing misha said and sees the mud horn fob and says, I see May the 4th was celebrated. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> May the 4th be with you. Of course. Of course. Yeah, that's awesome. So yeah, I'm surrounded by my lace. This is where prep table, I guess I could call this prep and trimming table. Cause I, even if, when I'm not on camera, I still, um, don't trim at the machine ever. So let's move the body parts over here. I'm gonna leave Tula right there. And this is the fabric that we're using um, for today. And like I said, I did my prep work. You don't have to, it's cause I was ironing it anyway, so whatever. And we need a zipper. So I chose a pink zipper cause I want it to kind of blend with the pink fabric um, around. So, okay, I think, Don, we are ready to hit the machine and start the fun. So, over to my Luminaire, and it's a Luminaire 2, and it was having trouble, so I am going to be watching it a little bit. It was having tension bobbin problems, but we had to clean it out a little bit. So make sure you keep your machine clean. They don't like to be dirty. So the first step we're going to do is just placement for everything, especially for the zipper. So this, oh, 
Shoot. Alright, I didn't. I'll check once the stitches, because we're going to have to go and line up the zipper, so... Yes, thank you for the bobbin check. Thank you, thank you. Uh, there we go. So this is the placement for the zipper. It also lets you know how, you know, kind of big the bag is. So, because we need to place the fabric on. I like the size of it, actually. I, I think it's a perfect size. If it was a little bit bigger, I would say it's a stethoscope, stethoscope bag. Um, so stabilizer, I'm using no show mesh, which is perfect for this, but any cut cutaway, um, regular needle. I changed it by the way, if anyone's interesting and I'm using the, my dime, um, magnetic hoop because I think it holds the stabilizer better when you're doing this. So let's see, Bob and check it's full Yay. back to the desk, Don. Oh, look. Tula had an accident. She's like flat down. Oh no. Sorry, Tula. It's a big, it's a big, big, big hoop. So here we go. And I'm going to move uh, Geraldine. You know, you know what fits on, on these tea lights. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I've got my masking tape and this is something that I purchased off of Amazon it's just a tape dispenser made for masking tape and I really like it. It makes it easier, I think. So what we want to do with our zipper, the important part is the middle line. So my edges are going to go over because my zipper is a little bit wider than this um, design, I guess, than this. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Oh, it looks weird from this side. Hmm. Okay. So we, what we want to do is line up the middle and the edges will be in the seams anyway, so we don't care. So I'm going to tape it and pull it tight and I'm going to double check this end. It's going to get sewn down in a minute. Slide it up. Oh, am I off? All right. The table is not allowing it. Sorry, that was my fault. I needed a little bit more room. Forgot I was using a kind of big hoop. So that should be good. And what I do is that I flip it over because you can see the line and you can see the line of the zipper. So I just kind of check because it's really nice once you get them straight. Actually, that looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. So, okay, let's go back to the machine, Don. It's nice they can see the details with the camera like that. Yeah. I like it. The next step Nature, is... Nature says open the zipper. Not yet. Okay. I will, though, but not yet. The next step is to stitch it down. And that's when you can see how close you got it to being good. And if you're really crooked, just uh, you can either leave it or take it out. It's just nicer if it's even. And I think I did pretty well on this one. Amazing what a little bit of masking tape will do. Yep, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. That looks pretty straight. Happy with that. So now we're going to put some fabric on before we do our designs. Now, the uh, next step is a line, and it's on the bottom. So what, what we're going to do, and I see my mistake. I see my mistake because this is what we want to do. It's basically folded fabric. So because I have a nice crease in there, that makes it easy to line it up. And if you want a little tape, put a little tape. I think it should be okay. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight. doesn't matter at all. I am watching my little fingers here. So, um, yeah, we're going to do a folded fabric. I had had it already folded, forgot. But that's okay. Now it's going to trim. And then guess what? Guess what we do with it? We fold it. 
So let's wait, go wait, ahead and do that. Fold it? We're folding it. I'm folding it right now. And I did that perfectly. It's right on my crease line. Now, it's nice if you get it nice and flat. Just finger crease it. If you want to put a little tape here, because I have my tape dispenser, it just makes it really nice to do. So, wonderful. So now we're going to stitch it down. And then we're going to do the same thing at the top, and then we're going to start doing the details, which is fun. Perfect. And if you sew over a little bit of tape, don't worry about it. It is actually quite easy to come out. So, looking good. Looking good, my Moo Moo. Oh, yeah. Placement on the, the cow bits. The cow, the black bits. I love it. Yeah, the fabric. Super good. So, we're going to do the exact same thing, but on the top. So it has to go, the fabric goes in the opposite direction that you're folding. So you want to, you know, make sure you have enough fabric to go to the top here. So that's, that's the tricky bit of it. And I do want to try to make this, eh, it doesn't matter. Everything's crooked. So eh, let's just do it. It's going to fit either way. So, stitch this down and then fold it and that's our basic stuff done. I like it. It's going to stitch it down too. And it's a lovely curve at the top. So there and we go. The pattern was in the all access, but they can get it on a needy good design separately, right? Yep. Yep, you don't have to get the whole all access. Although I will say I think it's worth it. But if you find designs that, you know, you just want that design, yeah, go over and you can get it right there. So look at that. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice. And you can see that the fusible fleece just gives it a little bit extra. So, the first thing we're going to do is change colors here for a minute. We're going to do the collar. So, I picked a really nice soft blue that I used. Just to kind of made it to go with the soft pink. And I thought it looked really good. So, we've got to stitch this out. It is an applique. It's full stitches. So, stitch it out. There we go. Okay. And that's going to look really cute. And we have one, two, three, four, five cow appliques that I'm going to be skipping because I already have cow applique. Look at how cute that fabric is on the camera. I love it. Jill. Hello, Jill. Thank you very much. We appreciate any support. Everything goes back into what we're doing, like getting really cute cow fabric for a cow purse, cow bag. That's awesome. Thank you so much. A smile on her face. That's cute. That's cute. Any questions, make sure you ask. This is live. Uh, if you're watching the rerun, rewind however you want to put it then you can go into the oml embroidery university facebook group and ask the questions there a lot of people to help if i don't catch it um i'm not always looking at my ipad to see it but i do like to take part in the conversation because it's so much fun hey looking good love it jill says hi sue and don love the cow fabric I've had it for a little while just waiting for a project to do with it. And this ends up being perfect. And I don't mind doing, you know, applique, but it's kind of cool to be able to skip it and save a whole bunch of steps and trimming and everything like that. Um, I really like it. It's super cute. Uh, before you turn it, before you put the uh, body parts on. 
and definitely before you put the back on. So the, the reason why we leave the zipper out, like it's out here, out on the side, uh, because we don't want the needle traveling back and forth and hitting it. So do keep it outside. Because we don't, the, it's, it's big and it's metal and it's going to hurt your machine. So before we do the end, we move it to the middle. And that purpose is two things. Your needle, your machine won't hit it because we're only doing one more outside stitch, but also so you can open it and turn it. So keep that in mind. No need to put your the zipper pull right now because we're going to be going up and over and around the zipper so we don't... Does that make sense? Did I explain that right, Don? I think so, yeah. yeah. We just don't want that. See how pretty that uh, light blue looks? I love it. And I have a really pale pink as well. Just stitching beautifully. Didn't uh, cover over the moo cow enough, but that's okay. You can still see the cow print through it, but I'm not worried. It's all good Judy quilt. Yes, Janet says, Happy Mother's Day tomorrow. Yay, Happy Mother's Day to everyone for tomorrow. Thank you. Yeah. Not you. Did you know, I'd like to point out a bit of history. You know, Don and I ride motorcycles. And did you know that Don purchased a motorcycle on Mother's Day? I didn't know such things. Yeah, he found the bike of his dreams and it was a good deal and he bought it on Mother's Day. We were out and the store was open and yeah. Yeah. What was I, doing? I I have no idea. Um me being me, of course I said something. Oh, nice. You bought a bike on Mother's Day and every single woman in the store gave him an evil eye for being such a poop. <laughs> It was fun. I mean, I didn't care, of course, but I'm not going to let something like that go. <coughs> That's for sure. So, nice little satin stitches around the outside of that. So, I cannot find the animal pouches. Give me a link, please. Is there a link in the description? That's where I always put it. If you go to anitagooddesign.com, it's uh, on the front page. You just have to scroll down. Wow, Don, neat. <laughs> what is the link to getting it? Uh, can you check in the description if I put a link? I usually do, but I've been a bit tired lately. Oh, my bad. Usually I do. Right at the top. It'll only be at the top. Oh, my bad. Sorry. I need a good design. Maybe you could look it up, Don. I need a good design online.com. We'll get it. This year I got a lawnmower for Mother's Day, birthday, anniversary gifts since all are in May. Well, that's nice. That's nice. Okay, so this is our first applique that we're gonna skip and it is a baby to it. okay so thank you not thank sure you <laughs> i'm not sure why i didn't add it in um i will say almost every single time there's a link at the beginning of the description so after the hashtags there'll be a link i didn't do it for this one so my apologies so what this is doing right now is we're going to do a black um, circle around the cow's eye and I'm not going to do that because I have the fabric but it's placement you put your fabric down and then it's going to tack it down and then you trim it and then it's going to do the satin stitches so I am gonna whoops wrong one not layout uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just skip down 
So and there. And the satin yeah. stitches. Sorry. What? And Mother's Day is tomorrow in Canada. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now we're going to do a pink applique. And what we're going to be doing here is the, uh, you know, kind of mouth, nose, muzzle area of the pig. The pig, the cow. Oh, yeah. come on. <laughs> oh, come on. So what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to change colors. So we won't need this blue anymore because it was only for the collar. So there we go. And I have my pink, which matches almost perfectly with the fabric that I'm using, which is nice. There we go. Had to untangle it a little bit. I'm actually using my second spool holder. I preloaded it when the cameras weren't around because I don't use that one because I hit it all the time. So pink in. Now we're going to do our placement. And it's going to look cute. It's going to look cute. And this is why I picked pink for the zipper, because it's all going to kind of blend in. Now, is it? It appears to be a folded fabric. Because how do I know that? Because there's a line. The next step is a line. So this is the placement. Now, I didn't have time to iron on anything on the back and if you look this fabric is quite thin and you can see through uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna double it up and it works pretty well so I've just got two pieces of it so again it is folded fabric so which means we're gonna put it in the opposite direction that we're folding and should be awesome. Now we want to leave enough room for a nice fold. And let's stitch it down and then fold it down. I love the cow. I love the pink. This is the perfect color of pink for this cow. I think it's so cute. So that's done stitching. That is going to hold our fold. And what are we going to do next? Well, we're going to fold it. So there we go. Nice crease. I got a little bit of bulk there, but I think that's okay. That was my fault. And just get a nice finger crease. I might even let it go up a little bit so it gets closer to the zipper. And use your pokey stick or whatever. Don't get your fingers anywhere near it. I am holding it right at the bottom but very, very, very carefully. It's doing one side, then the other twice. That's strange. Same results, though. Now it's starting to look cowy. All right, that is tacked down better than any tacked down was tacked down. Now we have to go back to the desk Don and I'll put it up high enough this time is it high enough not quite. not quite yeah I forgot I was using a big hoop so is that it yep all right so now we're gonna trim this carefully I don't really have the room to do it properly but I will do the best I can. It's a little awkward. It's quite awkward. It's awkward, Don. You can slide it down a little bit if you need to. Yeah, I wasn't kind of prepared for a big hoop. I had everything <laughs> set out just for not those, a big hoop. Those darn big hoops. Yeah, no, it's good, though. There we go. Once I got it rocking on, then I got it. Beautiful, but you see how the pink kind of, it's not exactly the same, but it's close enough. So what I was saying about the, um, sorry, Judy Quilt, I'm cleaning it. The zipper pull, it's quite, you know, thick. And if you were to put it here, 
for example, it's stitched right there, you're going to end up hitting it. So leave it to the side. So, okay, one. Let's go back on to the machine. And let's do number two. So you can see by doubling it up, it makes so you can't see underneath. And I like that. So this is going to be the same thing that we just did. And this is placement. Moo. Moo. And then the next step is a line. So therefore, we know I'm going to put my double fabric down and we're flipping it that way. So we want the fabric to be on this side. I really love folded fabric. Oh, it looks so good. It does. Especially beside the zipper like this. I love it. Perfect. Now your fabric, your folded fabric doesn't have to be lined up perfectly. Like you can see mine's crooked. Look, it's shorter there and longer there. Um, the only thing it does have to do is give you coverage over the lines. So yeah, doesn't that look cute mm -hmm. at the zipper? I like it. So I'm just finger pressing it. Now remember I'm using uh, two pieces of fabric. I would never use any more than that. But just so the, the cow bits don't show through. And it works. And I love it. Very cowy. So we need to let it do its dance. And we need to go back to the desk on so we can trim. I love, love, love how maybe if i turn it like this is that better yeah you can see it my arm's going to be in the way but um i love the pink and the cow fabric for whatever reason all right yeah i do need to turn it really is better if you turn your hoop to make better cuts see how much better this is i'm not struggling off the camera. I, I can't help it. I know. It's a big hoop. I'm not struggling. It's a whole lot easier. Yeah, you can see some of it. It's hard to cut when it's like this, too. Like, that's yeah. my arm fully extended. So, I just do the best I can. Get rid of all my fiddly <laughs> bits. What size but, hoop is it? Uh, this is an 8 by 12 hoop. Dime hoop that I happen to have and love. Let's go back to the machine, Don. The design itself is 8.67, so almost 9 by 5. So this was the closest hoop. Um, 6 by 10 would be a perfect fit. I just, for whatever reason, I don't have a 6 by 10 hoop. I, I gotta wait till I see it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if Bessie is gonna suit it. Something funny. Like cow tipping. <laughs> Do you remember cow tipping? No, that was tractor tipping. I'm sorry. Hmm. I don't know. I'll come up with something. It, it was. It shouldn't have been. No, for sure. SF101 is used in embroidery too. It's a fusible woven material. I use it on most products because it gives so much more stability to cotton fabric. Yep. If you have it, use it. I probably use the same thing. I just don't call it that. The um, fusible app... No, the fusible fleece took me a minute there um is a bit thicker than anything else so not as thick as batting but not as thin as anything else oh little drink there maybe that'll help my brain work better 
One thing I love about these cameras are the colors. It's awesome. It's awesome. So we have one more pink applique to do, and then we have a bell. So yeah, look at this. Isn't that cute? Perfectly matched pink thread. I had thought about using like a darker pink, but I didn't. Uh, the Jersey, <laughs> Chanelda, the Jersey cow. <laughs> I mean, yeah, why not? Why not? It's fun. Carol says, I absolutely love my dye magnetic hoops. Yeah, me too. Me too. I don't have too many. Um, I don't really need too many, I guess, but I would choose, uh, depending on what I'm doing, I would choose the magnetic hoop over the hoops that come with the machine for sure. I, I like it. It's just convenient. Uh, for this one, I used it because uh, the camera <laughs> It's easier for you to see. The other thing I found when you're working on the back of the hoop, um, it's a little bit easier to do. Like there's not much of a dip. Tank thinks we should be done now. He's cute. Now go lie down, Tank, please. Tankaroo. Oh, he comes to see me. Hello. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, I noticed on the Anita Good Design designs, they used fur and they put a little bit of the filmy kind of WSS over it like to make a bear or a bunny tail and yeah absolutely Janelda Janelda I actually kind of like that so now the nose so there's a lot of different um critter cases to make and I really love it for easily hooping no-show mesh stabilizer to a diamond netic hoop, it always takes me several times and several adjustments. Um, this is what I have, right? I have no-show mesh. Oh, because it's so light. Um, hopefully you don't let the, the magnetic hoops snap together. I know they're called snap hoops. Um, but the way I do it is I put the stabilizer on top of the bottom part and then I kind of slide the top hoop down where it needs to be. I kind of butt it up to where it attaches to the machine and then gently pull it over. And then if you're off, you can do the pull thing. I sometimes take two tries to do it, but most of the time I leave enough. This is how much stabilizer you're supposed to leave, like a good couple of inches around it. And I never use pins on my machine, by the way. I never do anything like that. These magnetic hoops hold everything pretty darn tight for sure. So I like it. Odie. Odie's a good boy. He's pretty spry. He's pretty happy. He's he's good. He, he hasn't made any hor horrible old man yakking noises, so we're good. Right, Don? Uh, yes. All the boys are good. Beetlejuice is happy that it's nice outside. He's fine. Oh my goodness. So what we're doing here, which I happen to have a perfectly perfect black spot, um, is the black applique and I am skipping it. So placement and then tack down. And now we're switching over to the belly part. So I'm gonna do that in pink. Tank, go lie down. He's fine. And there's a bell. That's the other thing we're going to be doing. Makes him cute. 
so that's the placement line and I'm still using my scrappity scraps and I'm using two and let's make sure that this fits it may be a smidgen chickeny but this is my last bit so <laughs> let's see how well I do fingers crossed fingers crossed yeah, a little bit of chicken. Woo! I should be a professional. That one wasn't close. A little chickeny, not bad. Beautiful. It's not a good day until you play fabric chicken. I I guess. <laughs> I don't know if I necessarily like playing fabric chicken <laughs> at all. All right, back to the desk, on so I can do some trimming. Are we good here? Kind of. Maybe move the camera just a smidge. This is where I got really close, guys. It wasn't. It wasn't bad. Okay, so my cow is coming out really cute. So, a little bit of trim in here. Easy. Everything's been easy so far. And I'm really glad that I doubled up the pink. That's okay. I just dropped something. Thanks, Tank. Tank's going to investigate. See what it is for me. You're going to have to wait, buddy. We're not done yet. Plus, you're going to go outside and woof. There we go. So that's pretty good. We got some satin stitches to put over it. So we're good. For sure. Not the greatest trimming, but I will live. All the satin stitches are going to cover it up. This is adorable, says Robin. Yeah. Oh, they can see Tay. Yeah, it's not as <laughs> Oh, Tank, we just love you, buddy. Yeah, that's cute. He's a big dog. Okay, back to the machine. I almost said desk. Woo. All right. Put my hoop on. And I think we're going to do applique for the bell. So I didn't find any gold. I love the gold that they used in it. Um, I didn't find any of that, so I'm going to use yellow. In my house, I actually have one of the original cowbells from the matriarch of our family. So the first person to come over from Scotland and the cowbells up on the wall. It's really, really cute. So, okay, bell, bell, bell. I think this is our last applique that I'm doing. So let's go back to the desk so we can cut out our bell. Yellow bell, why not? Close enough to gold. I don't think the cows were gold bells anyways. <laughs> For sure. There we go go looking good looking good I love it so okay a little more stitching let's go back to the machine Don so the next step notice the needles down here it would have been satin stitches for the applique so the black appliques now I didn't do them so I'm going to skip them. So now we are going to do the satin stitches for the pink applique, which is awesome. Just looking at the eyes, I'm not sure how I'm going to do the eyes. Because they're just little eyes. Ooh, satin stitches, loving it, loving it. A fellow Scott, yes. 
I knew we were friends for a reason. Husband is a McDonald and my family. Oh, cool. We are McCall's. The McCall's who came over. And I looked on a map and I found their land. They were landowners. Um, I guess they came to Canada pretty wealthy and I wondered why. Um, but my kids are named after them. So Samantha McCall was one of the first to come over. And that's my oldest daughter. And uh, Beatrice is also. So that's who I named them after. Which is cool. What's rattling? Don't be making any noises, my lovey computer. Anyways, just a little bit of Sioux history there. Uh, the other, the Wilson side of the family is English. So, yeah. McCall, isn't that cool? McKay, there we go. Um, and I know my <laughs> tartan, too, which is, it's beautiful, it's bright. The McCalls have their own tartan pattern. It's bright, and it's lovely. So, yeah, a little bit of family history going on. They were tough old farmers. Their coat of arms. Yep, I love it. We also have their Bible. Big, huge, leather-bound Bible from, like, the 1800s, I guess. Um, that is signed by every member of the family that it got passed down to. So there we go. My stepdaughter has McLeod, which is an enemy of the McDonald's. Go figure. Yeah, it's funny how that works, isn't it? So this is a little part of the bell that I am going to do. Oh, I couldn't find my gold, but uh, Geraldine was guarding it for me. Yes, it was on my desk under it. So I'm going to take this pink off and I'm going to add the gold and see how cool this is going to look in gold. So again, no, not really gold cowbells, but you know, this will be good enough. <gasps> King star. Oh. Did you guys see the new Kingstar metallic colors that came out? I did because you. Oh! <laughs> I sent it to him. I said, oh, they're spring colors, so they're all kind of pale colors. I'm like, yeah, I gotta save up some money and get some because, ah, they were awesome. Like a seafoam green and a pale blue and lilac. Yeah, they were really nice colors. Just listening to my machine when I... I guess it's okay. Just, it's going through a little bit more. Are you getting them soon, Sue? I really hope so. Uh, Judy Quilt says, new Kingstar colors? Woohoo! Yeah, I missed um, Eileen Roche on Thursday, and I was kind of skimming through it and I saw at the end and then I follow the page so I saw it too and I'm like Don! 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 <laughs> Ooh, we won't get them here for eons. Eh. They're beautiful though. So yes, I will be getting them because oh man, I'm going to have metallic everything. Oh, I like how the yellow and gold looks. Yeah, that's nice. oh, kind of nice. Yeah, I don't mind that at all. Beautiful. I don't know what that is. Oh, a little bit of shading. Eh, gold. Just a little bit of detail. I'm going to do it. It's going to be different stitches, so I'm still going to do it in gold. Oh my goodness, she's so cute. Beautiful. I'm loving it. I'm so excited for each step. I love Thank it. You. Mother's Day gift. 
Sarah says I only have silver and gold. Oh, I have just about every color except for these new ones. I'm like, yeah, I want it. <laughs> okay, so what color should I do the eyes? I can't do black. I may be able to do white or I could do pink. Definitely not gold though, so no. So white. I think you know will show up no matter where it goes. Yeah, and it matches. That's the thing. I'm not sure if it's going to go are, are off. The, are the eyes lined up with the nostrils or in closer than the nostrils? Because then you can use white and not worry about it. Uh, no, kind of in a little bit more. Uh, I think it's going to... I'll do pink. Pink. Just to keep the pink. Oh, wait, I'm not allowed to pick colors. Sorry. Oh, it's ruined now. <laughs> It was one of the suggestions, so maybe we'll be safe. <laughs> Everyone's safe will do. All right. So after the eyes get stitching. Oh, yeah, blue would have been nice. They're just like scrunched closed eyes, like they're not eyeballs. Pink, so, pink is fine. There we go. Um, the next step, we're going to be doing some placement for the hearts and then tack them down which is really nice that they get tacked down before you put the back on oh i like the pink yeah i'm happy with that um so this is where you know you just need a lot of tape a little bit tapey but that's okay before we do that we are going to move the zipper just to make sure it's done and we don't forget because I know we'll be stitching around the outside. All right, so placement lines and pink should show up. So this is for the arms, the legs, the horns, whatever you have. Can never go wrong with pink, pink, pink. I did pink, Lynn, I did. And the pink's gonna show up nicely on everything. So this is the placement for the arms. A lot of times when you're doing ones like this with extra stuff on it, that you tape down everything and then put the top, the it's actually the back on it, and it sews it down all at once. Because there's so many little things, I was actually dreading it uh, until I realized that it's... Um, like one at a time <laughs> and it sews it down before so that way you know all your stuff is placed properly so this is four ears and you know what if you want to skip one of these appendages like I mean obviously you're gonna put the arms and legs and ears but if you don't want to put the horns on it or something like that you don't have to you can leave them out Awesome. So we're almost done. And I'm gonna show you a really cool trick to put everything um, together, straight and perfect. And it's cool. And it makes it a whole lot easier. So you guys will love it. Beautiful. All right. So, get your tape ready. Let's go back to the desk. So, we want a good... See, I can move stuff around a little bit. You want a good view. Is that a good view? Good enough. So, so I can do... What's that? You moved it back a little bit. It moves, I know. The <laughs> desk moves. Should uh, lock the wheels. So I'm removing my little piece of tape. I do think that's a good view. And I'm gonna move my zipper. Now you don't want it too close to here because we are going to have stitching around, but it's open. I'm happy. Where did all my cow parts go? There they are. They're on the back. Stuff everywhere. So I'm gonna sort them out. This is a leg, leg, arm ear other arm 
Well, I guess it depends which way you want the arms going. <laughs> so arm, arm, I'll sort them out in a minute. And horn, and it's got to go the other way. Horn and horn. So... Your other ears on underneath your, the back. <clears throat> ah, there. Whew. Whew. So, couple of tricks for this part. You need your tape. Big time, you need your tape. So, you don't just tape them this way. Like, you don't just tape them this way. What we want to do is fold them so when you turn everything, they come out. My desk keeps moving. I guess we'll have to change that a little bit, Don. Because I can't get the bottom of it. That's good. So I'm going to take one of these feet and it's, you can see the pink line and we want it just a little bit down from that line. So you can see why the tabs are completely necessary for this. I think I like I think I like this side, so whatever side you want. I just did them kind of randomly, and you want it down a little bit. I'll show you a bit better in a minute. So, okay, arms. Oh, you were able to do it. Yeah, I'm trying to, trying to work it in. Good, then I can be a little more comfy. So the arms, you notice they're at an angle. So the arm, you can have the arms up or not. Now, I think I did, yeah, I think I did it like this. So you want it to be folded in. So when it flips out, this is going to be the side that we see. Always right sides together, right? And we're going to line it up with my pink line. And we want it slightly this way of the line because if you do it like this all this part is going to show can we see that okay yep so we want it this way and then get it where you want and you can see how handy the tabs are and that's going to hold everything in so let's do that again with this one so we want we want this way. That's cute. And find the line. Kind of, you can do it by look as well, but make sure you stay on the line there. And back, we want it that way so that it doesn't show our seams and our joining and the end of the satin stitches. So I'm going to pick the tape off after I'm not even worrying about how I'm taping okay look see that's not that's not hard at all so we've got our ears the correct side of these ears are the pink side so we've got one big piece here and how are we gonna do it is it horns first I think the horns go first let's do the horns now the horns are just horns black are in between I'm sorry, there's tape on it. <laughs> Whoops, did you see that fly? No, I missed it. I had tape on it. Fortunately, the tape comes off really easily. So I'm going to do it like that, I think. So hard for you guys maybe to see the line. So I'm going to line it up with the curve, and then I'm going to push it in a little bit and really make sure that I'm on the pink. So push it over. See, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. So I'm going to do the same thing they with go in this between one. between the ears, right? Yeah. Yeah. So same thing as what I did. And up a little bit, get them at the right angle. Tape. This is why the tape um, thingy is so cool. And now, don't have a cow. Don't have a cow, Don. Okay. And 
that's going to be kind of like at the bottom end of it. It's so cute. All these details. What makes it worth it? Yeah. Seems a little fiddly, but it's so worth it. It's, it's not that bad, actually. It's not that bad. And, of course, little boo-boos are not going to be a big deal. Now, I like to, you'll see me a lot of times, I tape right over where it's going to stitch. Then there's no real chance of anything moving or causing me issues. So I just do it. So, okay, back. Everyone understand how to do that? Uh, cool. All right, let's go back to the machine. And all we're going to do is stitch these down. Zippers are my biggest mistakes, Carol says. Yeah, a lot of people struggle with them, but zippers can be your friend. So now we're going to stitch down all the pieces. And you can see why I put the tape right through it, because that makes it easier and better. Now I probably, no, I'll just make it. Whew. I could have had that one over a little bit. Cute. Cute. So this is all we're doing, and I'm really glad it gets done beforehand so we can have a chance. So if something moves and it's way off, you have a chance to fix it because it's only, you know, two lines of running stitch. So it's easy. So we're almost done, everyone. Hold on. We're almost done for sure. Binding is my one thing I have trouble. I'm getting better at it. I'm getting better at it. I did a Secrets of Binding video, which uh, should help people out quite a bit. Eileen Roche has a good video on doing binding. I love how she does it. And practice, practice. And then practice some more. So... I'm going to get this out while it's finishing. So hopefully everyone's staying with me because this is the best part coming up. No more tape. There we go. This is the very last step. Awesome. So back to the desk, Don. So here I have my ironing board slash uh, cutting board, and I'm going to put Moo on top of it. And this is when we're going to get ready to put on the back, and then we're going to be turning it. So la-di-da, right? La di da, we're almost done now. I'm not going to sit and pick out all of these just because I don't want to take up too much time. But just the ones on the inside, I will I will do it after. I can turn it right back out. Um, I can do all of these after, but these ones are a little bit close. So, tank, stop. We're almost done. So, now, what we want to do is put the back on, but... We want it to um, match up. So some of you might find that difficult, uh, but we can do it with pins. This is all I did for it. So I do need to pick there. So I put a pin in the corner, okay, right in the corner of the back one, and then I'm going to pin it down and it is right sides together. So then we turn it, it's going to be out. Yep. Yeah. So see how easy that is corner and just making sure I get it. It's hard to see because I use black on black. Yes. Right here. So corner to corner, I'm going to do one more. Now, obviously I'm not going to leave it like that. Okay, so we've got that uh, top of the collar because we do want them to match. 
So I'm just trying to get a view in here. We do want the collars to match. So top of the collar and top there. How's that? So now I know my collar pieces are going to match, right? Uh, this is a great way of doing it for anything. So I'm not going to worry about that one. And then we're going to just do maybe one more at the top here. Just to make sure it goes this way enough. Isn't that easy? Isn't that easy, Don? It's easy. It's a little bit better if you don't move them. And I'm going to do one more pin. Now, we're not going to, obviously, not going to sew it like this. But it gives us a place to start for the taping. <coughs> so there we go. Top of the collar to top of the collar. Now you just stay. And you stay. And you stay. And stay. So now all I have to do is tape. So that is a huge time saver. That's a good way to line it up. Yep. Huge time saver. And precision. So tape the bejeebers out of it. Hopefully everyone's staying with me because now we're going to get to the final part. I guess I'm glad I didn't do all the appliques. This took a little bit longer than I thought. Take your pins out. You don't have to worry about it. Let's go back to the machine, Don. Isn't that a good trick? That is. That is so easy. Now let's stitch it down and then we're going to cut it and turn it and we're done. And we're going to see the moo cow. So it stitches a little bit on the inside of it. This, before you do this part, you must move your zipper. Must, must, must. Double check that it's in the inside. For sure. Okay, it's going to stitch it down twice. Are you guys excited to see what this is going to look like? Because <laughs> it's almost the moment of reveal. A little bit of pins, a little bit of... A little bit of pins, a little bit of tape. Well, it looks like an absolute disaster right now, but we're going to be cutting most of it off. So, and happy dance. And happy music. And look, it's awesome. We're going to take everything out. And I have my storage board right near me. So I can do that. And get this out of my way. Otherwise, there's no real place to put it. And look, I know it's kind of terrible looking. So let's cut it and make it look good you want to leave like a mm, about a half an inch sewing seam and pick off all the tape that you want did everyone stick with don for this part yep all right because that pin trick is honestly a lifesaver uh, I have to do a little bit more and we do want to, you better let him out, Don. Clip the corners and I'm not going to worry about the tape. No, wait a minute. Oh, yeah. Uh, then I'm going to snip in here just really carefully. This just makes the top look nicer. And then the last thing that we have to do before we turn it is we need to cut off and be very careful. I have cut zippers before. Just the stabilizer just at the zipper because we don't need it. And we want to be able to turn it. So here we go. Just being careful. Now you can see once I remove this, we can see the back of the zipper tank stop. Now I will go and, you know, fix everything up a little bit. 
going to try to open my zipper a bit more. Cut with pinking shears. Yeah, I should have. I find them difficult. So, look, an ear pops up. The birthing of a bag, except for this one's pretty easy. It's not too dramatic. So, I'm just turning it. And this is where I need my pokey thing because it hurts my nails. And pokey, pull pokey. Where's your pokey thing? Um, the machine, I think. Yeah, it's okay. I got it. It was just a certain spot that was. <clears throat> so even without all of the applique for the cow, I like it. His face looks like he was bashed in. But yeah, you have to do a little fiddling and maybe a little trimming on the inside. You know, but it's not too thick. You definitely need to iron. <laughs> That's cute. Isn't that adorable? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I love that. Oh, man. Can you guys see the join? Because I did the pins. Can you see it? Because it's perfect. Yes, it is. Perfect. Also perfect. Yeah. So that is a good trick to know. So I'm up for cow suggestions. So uh, leave it in the comments when we're done what you think this cow should be called. This is seriously the cutest cow I've done. So the unnamed cow and Tula Sullivan are super cute. Which one do you like better, Don? Oh, it's a tough call. That's a tough call, I, I know. Mean, it was Tula Sullivan, but that cow's pretty cute. So we need to name the cow, and I need to like poke out the corners and stuff like that. So make it nicer, give it an iron, and I will post pictures in the group. So. Hopefully you guys will be making some kind of critter. <laughs> it's so much fun and it's easy. It, nothing about that was difficult. Um, thanks everyone for watching. I hope you guys like this video. Please like this video and help us keep the channel growing. We really need to do that. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Bye Happy Mother's Day.